Well, there may be, maybe there's little debate. And see, I see my role mainly in the fact that I should summarize the risk factors once more. So what can go wrong? And then we have to balance the advantages and disadvantages of complete mesocolic excision. So there are no disclosures. So first thing is what Heather Yeo mentioned already, there's no completed prospectively randomized study, which is of course a big item of criticism because we all trust more or less uh, data of, so to say, minor value. And I found this very interesting publication, Complete Mesocolic Excision for Colon Cancer, Is It Worth It? from December 2019. And there's one chapter in there which is a kind of a horror story because uh, they describe the dangers of complete mesocolic excision. They say CME remains a technically more challenging procedure compared to conventional colectomies. Well, you've heard this from all the presentations today. And if there's damage of the SMV, it must be SMV, then it's a catastrophic outcome. We've seen this very nicely in the video. You need to be able to master these complications. Other damage can happen to the anatomic variations, which Dr. Ashburn has presented very nicely regarding the chunk of Henle with its many variations. Multiple middle colic arteries may be present, and there's a various, varying venous drainage of the middle colic artery present as well. The SMV may be ligated accidentally because it was mistaken for the middle colic vein because they run kind of in parallel. You have to really dissect them out to identify them. Traction, especially in laparoscopic surgery, may lead to tears. We've seen this in these videos. A compromised blood flow in the SMV may lead to thrombosis in the SMV, resulting in small bowel congestion and ileus, and in worst case, ischemia. There may be genitourinary dysfunction if you don't stay in the correct plane when uh, in Gerodas, between both planes of Gerodas fascia when you injure the gonadal vessels, and there may be chi leaks by central dissection. There may be a higher morbidity, as we've seen it in some publications, and higher morbidity means longer hospital stay, an increase in healthcare cost, longer time to adjuvant treatment, which may be necessary in these advanced tumors, and this may have an impact on the survival because it may deteriorate on the longer term. There are longer operative times, especially when you apply laparoscopy, which may lead to more losses of blood and insensible fluids. And there's a longer learning curve because you have to be able to master all these potential complications. And this may lead to a higher conversion rate for laparoscopy. And the authors of this study, this is all hypothetical, they say that conversion per se is an independent risk factor for surgical morbidity. And this may also affect the efficiency of theater space usage and impact health economics. So it's really like, a, really like a horror story which you read in this publication. And uh, this publication has been mentioned already because it's Bertels, Bertelsen. Bertelsen is from Copenhagen in Denmark and he is running, he's the chairman of one of four major city hospitals. And he came to see us in Erlangen and five times uh, to watch Holmberger, to be proctored by Holmberger during surgeries. So he learned it quite early, and he reported about these 529 cases in this hospital, comparing them with these 1,701 in the other three hospitals doing conventional surgery. And he recognized intraoperative injuries to other organs, and especially to the SMB, but as it was quoted already, only 1.7%. Of course, in contrast to 02 in the other hospitals. And there are also splenic injuries when you apply to the left colon, and this was a rate of 3.2% at least. There may be injuries to other non-tumor bearing segments of the colon too, a low rate of 1.1%, but it was a very meticulous investigation. And there are also general complications possible which may be more frequent, may be caused by these uh, uh, surgical complications which is pulmonary failure and sepsis. And this publication is very interesting to read too from China. They summarized 12 studies which had been published, more than 8,000 patients, and they saw the risk factors of CME as well because there was more blood loss and there were more surgical complications as mentioned before in the Bertelsen paper. But they also see the advantages because you achieve a better specimen which is uh, achieved by measurements because you should take a photo of the specimen and then later on you can still measure the, all the lengths which have been uh, applied when doing the excision. 
And he also saw positive figures for long-term survival, especially in stage three, if it was uh, disease-free survival. So the summary was limited evidence suggests that CME in a more effect, is a more effective strategy for improving specimen quality and survival, but with a higher complication rate, at least on the learning curve. Now, do we have to do such a comprehensive dissection in colon cancer? And I want to show you an example from the Cleveland Clinic. This was a male, 82-year-old patient whom I saw in clinics in uh, last year. He was diagnosed with a carcinoma of the ascending colon in July 2018 at another hospital. It was in Western Ohio. Biopsy was adenocarcinoma, staging no distant meds, and surgery was done there in July, and they called it an extended right hemicolectomy, but they applied conventional surgery. It was a PT4A, PN2A, M0 cancer, all margins free, so they were happy about the result. Adjuvant chemotherapy was applied according to the NCCN guidelines. And then two years later, when he went to his follow-up, there was a tumor found, which you see it here, a large circular tumor which was suspicious to be a lymph node, a lymph node which was left behind. So the patient came to the Cleveland Clinic so seeking for advice. And he had a colonoscopy done where there's no interluminal tumor shown. And I'd had this case discussed at tumor board and the unanimous vote was for doing surgery to re-resect the patient. What I did was I did a completion right hemicolectomy, now with complete mesocolic excision, and arm block resection of a segment of sigmoid and also some retroperitoneum, which had been involved by the tumor regrowth in the remaining mesentery. And I, I hooked the patient up. I gave him a side-to-side -side stable anastomosis. And here you see very nicely, there's the previous anastomosis they did in Western Ohio, ilocolic. And, if you, and here's the sigmoid which was involved by this tumor mass which originated from the central mesocolon which was left behind at this conventional surgery. And here was the tumor mass hidden by the surface of peri peritoneum. And you see the segment of sigmoid down there and the segment of the resection. So it, was, it took some time to dissect this, maybe three hours altogether. And then he was left behind with a new sigmoid anastomosis and a new ilocolic anastomosis. And here you see the central dissection. I really went down to the middle colic, uh, to the superior, uh, uh, to the mesencolic vein, because here you see the big gap between ileum and colon, which were re resected, as you just saw it on the specimen. And the SMV is located down here. And these lymph nodes were centrally dissected. And the pathology was showing this a 6.3 centimeter mesenteric nodule. I dissected another 17 lymph nodes. And this one was the involved lymph, lymph node but there was numerous microscopic foci of tumor uh, uh, present around the mesenteric mass, so, so tumor implants, and uh, this was consistent with nodal involvement of the, of the previous uh, colon carcinoma with incomplete resection. The surgical margins were again negative. So you see the advantage of doing complete mesocolic excision, and if you go back to Rupert Turnbull, who was the chairman of colorectal department at Cleveland Clinic, starting in the 1950s until 1977. And we all know that he developed this no-touch isolation technique. He, do, he did medial to lateral, lateral approach and open surgery. But what did he really do? If you see what he describes in this publication from 1967 as conventional technique, you see that it was an incomplete mesocolic excision. A segment of colon not even fulfilling these rules of geni with lateral margin and taking a little bit of mesocolon out. And what he called his Turnbull no-touch isolation technique was a longer segment of colon which was resected and a central vascular tie and much more mesocolon, almost complete mesocolic excision which was done. And he had the better results. You see this conventional technique observed survival for all patients after five years, 52 percent and 68 percent in his group, and for stage three, corresponding to Duke C, 28 percent versus double to 57 percent by Turnbull technique. It was even better if it was age-adjusted. Now, Holmberger, my old boss, I was working for him from residency until he, being his private attending, involved in most of his surgeries doing complete mesocolic excision. Why did he describe this term? He observed how in the 1980s, by Heal's technique, 
TME improved the results for rectal cancer. And this gave him the idea to improve it for colon cancer as well. And even more, as during the 1990s, we found first publications where rectal cancer had better results than colon cancer, although it's more difficult to access by anatomy. And this gave him the incentive to study better techniques in colon cancer. And then he called it complete mesocolic excision, the technique I just showed you. In this way, he could improve his results in re local recurrence rates. He was minimizing them from in stage th three from these high rates uh, of 15% to less than 5% in the years of 2000 to 2010. And the same is true, reversely, for the survival rate. The five-year survival rate, disease-free survival for stage three went up from a low rate of like uh, 65, 62% to more than 80 or even 85% after introduction of his technique. So I think this is very convinc convincing. And if we balance the risk factors which we have seen in the horror story initially and the advantages we may achieve by better surgery, and we have responsibility to, to our patients, as you've seen this, with this example from the Cleveland Clinic I gave you, then I think we should follow this technique. We know there are risk factors, but we have to overcome these risk factors. We have to learn techniques, as we learned it in laparoscopy and initially in open surgery, how to stop bleeding, and we should learn how to avoid this. So just prevent any bleeding, prevent chyle leaks, and prevent any injuries to surrounding structures is most important, and the more frequently we do this and take our time for learning and being proctored, the less frequently we will have complica uh, complications, and we shouldn't blame a young technique, which is still developing, uh, for being responsible for all these uh, negative effects, which are, I think, if you balance it, uh, minor important in comparison with the positive effects you can achieve with perf uh, performing CME. Thank you.